Welcome to SAT 0 to 1. In this lesson, we're learning about probability. Probability is just a number between 0 and 1, which measures how likely something is to happen. If we have a probability of 0, it means something is impossible. A probability of 1 indicates something is bound to happen. The reason we need the probability is because sometimes it even has more than one outcomes. For example, when we toss a coin, the coin could show a head for the first toss, and then we toss the coin again. The coin could then show a tail for the second toss. And so to describe the pattern of a coin toss, we can adopt the concept of probability. For the SAT, you only need to remember one thing. That is, for outcomes that are equally likely to happen, for example, our coin toss being head or tail, the probability is equal to the number of desired possibilities divided by the number of total possibilities. Now, the probability of getting ahead is 1 over 2, because there are two outcomes in total, and only one of them is ahead. Let's remember that concept and try to apply it to another common item in probability class, the dice. We now have a six-sided dice. Suppose we want to know what is the probability of getting a number less than 3 on this dice. Well, Remember that the probability is equal to the number of desired outcomes over the number of total outcomes. For the number of total outcomes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And notice two of them are less than 3, 1 and 2. So the number of desired outcomes is 2. And therefore, the answer is 2 over 6, which simplifies to 1 over 3. OK, let's now try a practice problem. Our survey is sent out to high school about the student's favorite subject. And the table below lists the result from a sample of 100 students. Part A, if we randomly select a student, what is the probability that her or his favorite subject is math? Well, again, we're dealing with probabilities. So we need to find the total possibilities and desired possibilities. Notice in the problem, it says a random student was selected. So we need the total number of students to be the denominator, which is 100. And we're looking for students whose favorite subject is math, that is 35. So our probability is 35 over 100, that's 7 over 20. OK, let's now move to part B. What is the probability a randomly selected freshman likes chemistry the most? Well, this time we're looking at freshmen only. So the total possibility is the number of freshmen, which is 54. So that's the denominator. And there are 28 freshmen whose favorite subject is chemistry. So that's the numerator. And our probability becomes 28 over 54, which simplifies to 14 over 27. Finally, we're at part C. What is the probability that a randomly selected student is a senior whose favorite subject is physics? OK, since we're choosing a random student again, not a random freshman or senior, our denominator is once again 100. And the number of people who is a senior who also likes physics the most is 15. That's the numerator. Thus, the probability is 15 over 100 simplifies to 3 over 20. OK, this is it for probability question involving tables. If you want to know more about tables of data, you can go back to your table of contents and watch my video about tables. OK, let's move to the next type of problem that you can face during the test. Practice two. There is a jar that contains red, blue, and orange marbles. If the probability of randomly selecting an orange marble from the jar is 2 over 7, what is the probability of randomly selecting a red or blue marble from the same jar? OK, so we have seven marbles. Let's put it out here so we can see what is happening. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. That's good enough. Now, remember, when dealing with probability, we use the number of desired outcomes and divide it by number of total outcomes. In this case, suppose we have seven marbles in total. OK, let's put it in the denominator. And because the probability of getting an orange marble is 2 over 7, that means there must be two of them which are orange. OK, 
and we need to find the number of marbles that's either red or blue. Well, for the marbles that's not orange, we actually have multiple possible scenarios. We could have one red, four blues, or two reds, three blues, or three reds, two blues, or four reds and one blue. But doesn't matter the combination of reds and blues, the total number of them is always five because seven minus two is five. So the numerator we're looking for is five. And the final answer is five or seven, choice D. Okay, practice three, probability involving algebra. Um, if X is a number chosen randomly from the set one, two, three, and Y is a number chosen randomly from the set two, three, six, what is the probability that the product X, Y is equal to six? Mm. Okay. This is a more complicated problem comparing to the previous two. Whenever you're feeling confused about what's happening, draw something, a graph, a table, anything that helps you to visualize. Well, this time I will use the table. Let's write out the values for x and y first. We have one, two, three for x, two, three, six for y. Notice we have nine elements in total, and that means the total possibility is nine. Okay, then we can multiply each value of x by the value of y. Of y. So if the first box would be one times two, for the second box, it would be two times two. And if we do this for all nine boxes, we could have a table like this. Okay. And here are the answers after carrying out the calculations. Notice we have three sixes, one, two, and three. That means our numerator would be three. So the answer is three over nine, because there are nine possible outcomes in total, and three of them have a product of six. And we can further simplify this to get one over three. Okay, and the answer is A. Okay, that's it for this lesson. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.